Hey, Ticat fans, thanks for joining us. We're on the weekly edition of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. That's me. I'm joined by Orlando Steinauer, the uh, Ticats head coach and on a 2-0 and win streak here, tied for first place in the East. Coach, good to see you, man. Yeah, it's good to be seen. Good to see you, Luke. Well, fantastic win yesterday. It was very, very fun being up in the booth with RJ Broadhead on the Ticats Audio Network and but I can promise all the fans listening, it was not as fun as being in the locker room after the game. What was it like? Well, it was, I mean, you've been a part of those, Luke. It's always a great time. Anytime you win, winning is tough. And I think it gets uh, lost in, in just all the hoopla of everything and the expectations of winning. Uh, but it is not easy to win. Everybody's putting together game plans to beat you. So uh, I was excited for not just this week, the players, of course, the coaches, you know, everybody, you know, within the football piece of it was, it was very exciting. And I'm, what I mean by that is the equipment people, uh, the front office, video department, th those are a given. But what I sensed was the city of Hamilton, the, the ticket office, the event staff, the people were ready for football. It'd been a long time. And so I, it wasn't just a, a great celebration for uh, the team, but it was people walking back to their cars, feeling filled, fulfilled, you know, it was the energy that they brought. So I'm just excited for not just ourselves, uh, internally, but the organization as a whole, and of course, the city of Hamilton, long time coming. Yeah, it was just a great day. I I got to see some folks after the game, like you said, in, in the business side, uh, in the ticket side, uh, Denise in the Ticat store. <laughs> just right. great, great to see some people who I really hadn't been able to talk with since before the Grey Cup uh, in 2019 or the Grey Cup week, you know, 2019 and the the world was on lockdown and the tight cats and all the other sports franchises were all of course on lockdown. And this was a really great day uh, for Hamilton to get back in the stadium and just a great day on the field. I, I don't, I mean, certainly not perfect. There's all kinds of things in every football game to correct, but you guys looked really, really cohesive out there. Is there anything that surprised you uh, as far as, as how well you guys played or was, what are you most proud of, of the team after that game? I think just uh, the preparation leading up to it. I felt like the guys were focused. Now the game's always about execution. And I thought that we didn't really panic. We didn't flinch. Uh, even though the scoreboard wasn't reflecting maybe the way the game was going. Uh, you know, it was very, I don't know, I think it was, you know, 10 to four for a long time, which is basically zero, zero. And I just felt like they, we just kept chopping wood. And we weren't worried about if the momentum was in our favor or not, or if our big plays were coming or if we went two and out or we got them to go two and out. And they just kept playing. And then the scoreboard ultimately reflected it at the end. And I think when you start getting caught up in the emotions of the game and well, we should be, and we have to do, you've been part of that. It, it's just yeah. taking you away from your focus. So I think that's what I'm most proud of is just taking the game as it came and, and making it manageable. I like, uh, Tommy's analogy that he used to use was uh, as opposed to chopping wood, he would say pound the rock. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you, you're, you hit a, you hit a rock with a sledgehammer over and over again. And then all of a sudden you see no progress, no progress. And then it splits down the middle and you got to work and work and work without seeing the progress. In some ways, that was the first part of the season, two games that it's just a grind and you're trying to get things right and things aren't always going your way. And, and it looks maybe sloppier than it is. You know, it's a game of inches and a game of slight wins, slight edges. And when a number of those don't go your way, it gets ugly. Yeah. But on Labor Day, there were little wins all around the field. I saw, I mean, it's incredible. We're up in the, from my, I'm, I'd never been up to the seventh floor up for a game like this i'm looking down on the field and i can see blitzes you can see contours and defense it's unbelievable and i can see dane evans there were multiple times in the first half where i'm seeing the, the play develop and i'm saying they're bringing two off the edge and sure enough dane got the ball 
and threw it over top of those blitzers to hit his guy. I mean, he was really seeing some things pretty clearly. It seemed like for me up top, a huge win. And then when you have a touchdown off defense and a touchdown on special teams, it had to have been a pretty proud team meeting, I think, today or tomorrow when you guys get back together. Yeah, and when, when you can sit here and uh, go to a team meeting and, and you scored in all three phases, uh, it's not definitely expected on the offensive side, right? But when you, when you can add a defensive and a special teams touchdown, that's pretty special. I don't think that happens a ton. Now, maybe it's become the regular since, you know, we were together since 13. We may have done it a few times, but – yeah, not a, that's not an every week feat in football. So when it does, you want to make sure at the end of the day, you don't want everyone to, you know, be talking about these things and having lost the game. Right. Then you're talking about moral victory. So it's it's great to uh, talk about it after a win. And, and that's the goal. Right. And, and that's the thing that we just have to understand is that we didn't get four points or six points or eight points just because it was Labor Day. We got two points. It's one win. Uh, it, we needed to win and we, but we feel like we need to win every week. That's just our approach around here. You know that. And, yeah. and uh, so we're ready to roll up our sleeves and, and we know it's going to be <laughs> it probably, if not equally, it'll be, it'll be a lot more tough this next week and they'll be in their own spot. And that's the fun part about it. Right. And you know, you know, you're not fully healed from the first game. You're, there's a little ache and a pain, uh, but you got to be mind over matter and you got to go out there and do it for the man next to you. The, uh, you were proud of the prep leading into Labor Day. What about this week? This is a strange week of prep for a football player. This is how hockey players are supposed to prep for, for games, you know, in a th- three days in between uh, matches. What's it going to look like for you guys getting ready for the second uh, Argo game? Well, we definitely won't practice uh, a ton, meaning we won't practice hard for – for a couple of days, uh, you know, it's that always that balance between preparation and being as healthy as you can and, and how much do you take care of their legs? But at the same time, you got to get some corrections done. And, and I'll be lying, I'd be lying if I said, this is exactly what we're going to do. You know, we're still piecing that together of what it's going to look like tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, that's mainly because we haven't done it. This will be our first time doing it this year uh, on a short week. We are in the middle of a stretch of four games in 17 days and, you don't have to be great at math to know you're playing about every four and a half days. That's what it's going to feel like to the body. So uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long haul, not just this week, but for the next two weeks uh, after this. So um, we definitely won't uh, will err on the side of being uh, less reps than more reps this week for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember growing up, my dad would tell a story of after having played a game with the bills, he'd finish. And he, re- he, he referenced the energy in the locker room of the glow of the game. Like, you know, you see your teammates coming off and there's nothing like a football player who's just won a football game. And so you get that. And especially on Labor Day, especially a home opener after two years of not being in a the stadium, there's a glow and an energy. And then you wake up the next morning and you feel a different way. <laughs> and then you wake up the morning after that and you really feel a different way. And so yes. I, I, I'm I, good to, I mean, you're, you're not far removed from those days and those games yourself to know that sometimes it's the day after the day after and where you really, really know how you're going to practice that day. So interesting. And certainly there's going to be a mental, uh, mental uh, hill to overcome playing the same team twice. The unique thing about this game was what happened in the second half of the fourth quarter. Uh, Bethel Thompson took over and he put some, had some productive times. Now, Everyone, everyone can see, you know, you're at, it's at a point in a game where the defense gets a little preventive, preventative, the offense gets a little bit aggressive. And so it, some things went their way. What do you think about the Toronto Argonauts offense going into this uh, Friday matchup? Well, I know that, you know, in reviewing the tape, I thought they had a, a decent plan. Right? It, it was obvious how they kind of wanted to attack us. Uh, I do know that they've got three great minds over there, uh, meaning, you know, McAdoo's a former coordinator. Of course, Ryan Dinwiddie is, is there and and Jarius Jackson have all called plays. So, and, you know, they've all got have their own thoughts on, you know, just playing us in years previous. So uh, I think they're extremely talented. You know, there's, you know, a couple plays that, that maybe could have went their way. And like I said, for a long time, the game really wasn't decided. Right. Uh, I didn't see really any quit uh, when it when it came to them. 
So I expect uh, they'll make some adjustments. I don't expect them to go too far from who they are as far as their quarterback situation. You know, at the end of the day, I believe they'll run the same plays regardless of who's in there. There's not like it's not like you're going from a triple option quarterback to a drop back passer. Um, I'm sure they, they both have different strengths and, and different areas of weakness. But I would I would assume that the uh, the play calling would be remain somewhat similar. Uh, but at the end of the day, you don't know, you know, if that's kind of the fun part of it. And that's why you play the game. Uh, you know, they can run the ball effectively. I'm sure we're going to get a nice dose of that and, and we'll just see how it plays out. Yeah. Uh, um, early in the season, Winnipeg, uh, a little bit of SAS too, had success in the run game, but since then your guys defensive front has been, it, it I can't even, I can't even find the words to describe it, 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 it calling the games. And that's on the front four. I text Jamal Roll after this game because I think that he is. I don't think they, people can complete passes against him right now. I mean, that's how good it seems like he's playing to me. And when the ball comes to him, he's a, he's got two steps on the receiver. Like it's like he's running the go route. You know that 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 they're trying to throw to down the field. It's unbelievable. I don't know. So you can say that they're going to bring some run game approach. I don't. I I take the Ticats defense over anybody right now. It look it's that impressive uh, watching from the. Uh, from the seventh row, but very excited for the uh, upcoming match. I got to ask though, the, uh, it was an hour before the game. I saw yourself and Sean, Sean uh, Burke at center field, trying to break up some, some scuffles. What's your take on the chippiness? Obviously you played in it, you know about it. It's, it's going to be, what do you think about that? And what do you tell the team about it leading into Friday? Well, it's, you know, sometimes it's controllable and sometimes it's uncontrollable where, you know, sometimes, you know, I know our guys are going to say hello in their own way. And, you know, you don't ever know how it's going to respond from team to team or how the other team's been prepped. You don't know if that's part of their plan or not, but uh, they've got some guys that uh, aren't scared to voice how they think the game's going to go and what they're going to do to people. And we have guys that tend to not want to back down at the end of the day, none of it affects the outcome of the game. So obviously <clears throat> they're grown, you know, they're, they're able to prepare in the ways that they want to prepare. We don't in- encourage that, that type of tone, to be honest with you, you've been around me. Um, we obviously don't back down from much either, but at the same time, it, it's, it can't be selfish, right? There's been examples in the league in the past where there's been 15 yard penalties to start the game before it's even started. And that's when you cross the line. And so as a coach, you always want to take those examples that have happened in the past and learn from other people's mistakes and make sure that you don't do it. So that's the messaging. Yeah. Yeah. It's about playing football. That stuff is secondary. I mean, but I, TS, that's all they show on the TV, right? It's like, I'll, it makes the storylines. It makes for people to, to, it does make it exciting, but uh, it, and it is labor day uh, to a T uh, it, it really is the, uh, what is the, you take the field Friday, it's only been three days of rest. What is the thing that you want to see your team increase the most from the game on Monday night? I would just say uh, mental errors and, and increase their communication. Okay. Um, you know, physically, I thought we played hard. I thought our effort was good. Listen, we're coaches. We're never satisfied with it. Yeah. But the perfect game has never been played by a player. And a perfect game hasn't been coached by a coach. That doesn't mean we won't strive for it, uh, but there are some things that maybe we emphasized in practice that we'd like to make sure that, you know, we understand that, you know, repeatedly making these type of mental errors at some point may cost us and we might not be afforded a, a bigger lead. So I would say increased communication and just maybe attention to detail uh, in some areas in all three phases. Yep. Yeah, certainly that it was, it was the not free of mental errors, but it was the Argonauts that had the, the, uh, greater number of costly penalties that was a really really frustrating thing to watch as just a football game progressed uh how costly their penalties were and maybe that would change if they had made a a few less mental errors and then of course i think the score zone efficiency you know the first drive down um actually i'm forgetting if it's the first or second now where a penalty took us took the tiger cats back uh from the touchdown and then it would almost happened again except for my man, David Unger, have you got what? I mean, are you going to show that in the team meeting? Like, how's this going to be presented to the team? That was amazing. 
Yeah, good, good for David. And you know, you, you don't get you don't get a ton of opportunities out there. Yeah. Um, and but when you do, you'd like to make the most of it. Normally, you're catching a hitch and getting yourself knocked off. There, people are barreling down on you. Um, you're running, you're running routes to clear out for other people. But when you get an opportunity to get the ball in your hands and make the most of it, um, I, I was just happy for him. More importantly, I was excited for our team. Uh, we 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 needed we needed a play there. Dane stepped up and scrambled, and, and he wasn't satisfied with just catching it, but obviously doing something with the football. So great job. Great job there. Um, that he, that was fantastic. Great to watch. I saw him carry the ball off the field too. So I hope drew kept that one aside for, for Unger uh, till so they can have that at home. Um, Drew's the best, you know, he's got it put away for him. I have two on my shelf from, uh, from drew that he sharpied for me and everything and, and Mark. So, uh, Coach, excellent. It's getting, it's, it's once again, looking like a very, very exciting uh, season at shaping up uh, just to be a great match in the East. And this Friday will, will uh, set, uh, set the Ticats and could potentially set them in a really great position moving forward. Coach, thanks for your time. This is the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker, our weekly update with Orlando Steinauer and uh, very, very excited for Friday coach. Proud of you guys. And, uh, it's just fun to, fun to watch and be in the stadium while you guys are doing your thing. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I look forward to next week.